two pictures are rapidly changing in front of your eyes. Our huge planet and a black void. The picture of Earth is getting smaller by the second. You're flying away from the spaceship into an endless vacuum and don't know what to do next. The International Space Station flies 250 miles above Earth's surface. A spacewalk is routine for astronauts who work there. Astronauts have spent more than 11,000 hours in the black abyss to this day. Fortunately, during all this time, no one has ever flown away into outer space without coming back, as we've seen in the movies. But unfortunately, astronauts face other, no less terrible, dangers during spacewalks. One such accident happened in 1966. Eugene Cernan put on a jetpack and went into outer space to carry out some repair work. The jetpack, which helps an astronaut control flight in zero gravity, heated up a lot. Eugene put on special protective pants made of metal to protect himself from this heat. The pants protection didn't work when he went into outer space. Instead of directing the heat away from his body, the pants began to heat up. The suit was heavy and uncomfortable, like a knight's armor. It rubbed his skin and restricted movement. Working in zero gravity is physically very hard, but Eugene also had to deal with his whole suit heating up that day. Inside the spacesuit, he felt like he was in a hot bath. High temperatures and hard work caused overexertion, dehydration, and severe weight loss. His face was sweating, and drops of sweat blinded him. During this spacewalk, the astronaut lost about 13 pounds of weight. Other astronauts came to the rescue and took him back to his spacecraft. To reduce overheating, they sprayed him with cold water from a hose. In a sense, to go out into an infinitely huge open space, an astronaut must put on a suit resembling a body cage. Another dangerous incident happened in 1973. Two astronauts, Pete Conrad and Joe Kerwin, went into outer space to repair a solar wing on the Skylab space station. The wing didn't turn around, and the astronauts tried moving it manually. Using force, they turned the stuck wing, but it pushed them. The push was so strong that it threw both astronauts aside. They didn't have time to grab onto a nearby surface and began to fly away into outer space. Fortunately, they had safety cables that didn't let the astronauts go away for good. By grasping them, the astronauts returned to safety. In an ordinary modern spacesuit, there are more than 10 protective layers. Such a suit protects against extreme cold and hot temperatures. It's tear resistant and doesn't leak moisture from the outside. This protection is necessary to prevent depressurization. If a small passage appears between your body and space, then all the oxygen will start coming out of the spacesuit. The more oxygen the suit loses, the more vacuum it gets. This leads to terrible consequences, such as suffocation and increased body volume. It looks as if you start to inflate from the inside. In 2007, Rick Mastraccio went into outer space to do some repair work. For some reason, there was a hole in his left glove next to his thumb. It was on the outer layer of the glove. But the worst thing was that the astronaut hadn't noticed it. He continued to work as if nothing had happened. But one damaged layer could destroy the second. The second one could tear the third one, and so on, until the vacuum reached the astronaut's skin. Rick was supposed to work six hours in outer space, but during the fourth hour, he noticed the damage in his spacesuit. The astronaut reported this to command and received an urgent order to return to the ship. He never found out how the hole had appeared. Inside the ISS, there are many chemicals necessary for working in space. For example, ammonia has the property of freezing almost any surface. This chemical frost is used to cool some components of the station during overheating. The leakage of this substance on the ISS is practically impossible. This is exactly what astronaut Robert Kerbeam heard from experts during the training before his first flight to space. But this accident occurred to him on his first spacewalk in 2001. Robert was working outside the space station when an ammonia leak started. 
The liquid splattered all over his spacesuit. A thick layer of ice quickly covered the glass. Robert didn't see anything. He feared that he had broken something, but the accident was not his fault. The protective layers of the spacesuit didn't allow Robert to freeze, but the ammonia severely restricted his movements. The main problem was that he couldn't return to the ship. Ammonia could get into the station, and this could lead to an emergency. Robert had to stand in outer space for one and a half hours and wait for the leak to end. After that, he successfully returned to the station. To realize how difficult work is in outer space, we need to understand what a spacesuit is. It weighs 280 pounds, which is as much as a scooter. You won't feel its weight in zero gravity, but it will still make you sweat. Astronaut Chris Hadfield had described it by saying that every movement inside your spacesuit meets resistance. The suit scratches your skin, squeezes your bones and joints, and forces you to spend twice as much energy on simple movements. In such conditions, you start sweating and your eyes get wet. This moisture flies inside the helmet and blinds you until it evaporates. But if there's too much moisture, it can threaten the life of an astronaut. Such a case happened in 2013 with astronaut Luca Parmitano. He went into space to measure something outside the station. At one point, he felt that the back of his head was wet. He informed the others about it and got an order to return to the station. When Luca was coming back, he had to turn upside down. As soon as he did this, water gushed into his helmet. It covered most of his face. Luca couldn't see or hear. He tried to report the trouble to base, but the water covered his mouth. Fortunately, his partners rescued him and helped him return to the station. When they opened the helmet, almost half a gallon of water poured out. Astronauts' cables are some of the most reliable defenses against floating away into space. But what if one broke from a strong push, or because the astronaut didn't fix it well? For additional protection, there's a backpack called SAFER, Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. It's like a jetpack. It releases gas from small tubes and changes the direction of your flight. If you're spinning in space, SAFER stops and aligns your movements. You can take manual control and fly using a special joystick. SAFER was first used in 1994, but before engineers created it, there was the MMU, the Manned Maneuvering Unit. In 1984, astronaut Bruce McCandless used it for the first time. You may have seen this famous photo where he floats in outer space without a cable. The problem was that Bruce was the first tester of such a jetpack. He wasn't 100% sure if it would work. He went into outer space and unhooked the cable from himself. There was nothing else to keep him from flying into the infinite black abyss, and his team wouldn't be able to save him. Imagine how scary it must have been. Fortunately, the jetpack worked. However, after three missions, NASA decided to stop using the MMU as it was unsafe. After that, engineers invented SAFER. Jetpacks and cables are reliable safety systems, but the best protection for an astronaut in space is their skills. Each astronaut has six years of higher education and several more years of training. They spend many hours training in virtual reality with spacewalk simulations. They train their body, endurance, and mind, since the main thing in a dangerous situation in space is not to panic and stay calm. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.